Okay. All right. We are recording. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. So, should I do an intro? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Dave Gunning, it's such a treat to join you from Nova Scotia to Scotland. Woohoo! Yeah. <laughs> Thanks so good much. To, good to see you two. The world's been getting smaller lately. Yeah, yeah I know. Awesome. Thanks yeah. to Global Music Match. Like, we're yeah. still able to connect with cool artists yeah. from around the world, and we've been really enjoying listening to your music and we can't believe like the extent of music that you've put out you so you've been an artist for 23 years is that right i guess so yeah <laughs> nice. it should be a lot um, better than i am really ah it's beautiful music and you've released 13 albums we read is that, would that yeah be right? that's so like, prolific yeah. that's like more than one every two years yeah and we sort of we were listening to your music and thought it was a kind of a combination of tom waits and Safian Stevens. But how wow. would you like yeah. to describe your music? I, I don't, I mean, I don't really know. I, 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 uh, I listen to lots of music that's a lot different than what I play myself. But, uh, but yeah, I, I guess I was inspired by a lot by Celtic music when I started out writing. And, and I was always pulled toward writing story songs about characters and things. And, but yeah, I spent a lot of time listening to different singer songwriter records. And, yeah. and, uh, the, I think the, the last thing I was, really enjoying was the Gregory Allen Isakoff records Ooh, that they were cool. so, so well produced and but um yeah it, it I don't know I kind of I just enjoy uh listening to lots of different things and and I'm starting to get psyched up now to to maybe start another records in the next few months and wow cool. great great stuff yeah, yeah. so you, you're born and bred Nova Scotian is that right yeah I I actually live in the same neighborhood where I grew up. So cool. you know, I think all the crows and the trees know me here. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. And you've got chickens. I aspire yeah. to have chickens someday. I, yeah, I don't like to brag, but we've got, uh, <laughs> we've got some, some nice chickens. Aww. Cool. Yeah. What yeah. kind of chickens have you got? They're a mixture of a bunch of things. Um, the last two birds that we got were little silkies. Uh, oh, I love silkies. Like, yeah, they're they're cute little things. Yeah, and, my brother's uh, got silkies. He's got six silkies, and they've got those massive like feet, the hairy white like. Yeah, they're feet. friendly <laughs> so little birds too. <laughs> yeah, they're yeah. really they're really friendly, and they make like little cute little eggs. There's nice. my dad says they're like if a rabbit and a chicken was to breed, <laughs> they make silky chickens. <laughs> 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 well. There you have it. <laughs> They're pretty cute. And then we, we rescued, we actually just recently rescued four hens from an egg factory. They only cool. keep them for a short amount of time, and then they, they become dog food, I guess. So yeah. we, we rescued these four hens, and uh, we kept one rooster. We were Actually, in the beginning, we, we got four chickens, and they all turned out to be roosters by accident. We thought they were all hens. <laughs> so we kept one of them, Bueller is his name, and he, he's a beautiful, he's a really good rooster. He, he's doing his job. Um, he right. started making these weird noises and drove all the chickens into the coop the other day and we looked and there was an eagle in the sky. <gasps> oh, yeah. oh my it, goodness. It's a good job. Good guy. Yeah, it's, it, yeah. And if you go out to feed them, like bring them lettuce or a treat or, or grapes or anything, he, the rooster, will, he'll always come out first and try it. And then he makes this like, like cock, 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 cock sound and, and all the other hens come over and he starts ripping off pieces and throwing it down on the ground for them. Wow. So he's looking after, he's looking yeah. after them. Yeah, yeah, he's like the test, the taste tester. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. He's a cool person. Yeah, s swirling the glass of wine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, <laughs> it's Tyson. Before we went on the chicken uh, tangent, yep. how do you feel like your chickens, I mean, Nova Scotia has influenced your music? <laughs> well, uh, uh, yeah. Maybe the chickens have also fed into the, the tunes. The chickens, there's no doubt they're entering in, into the, the, the world of inspiration here because, <laughs> well, I can't do anything without hearing them in the background. And so they're going to be on the next record for sure. Oh, cool. Um, Back in singers. But, yeah. And, but I, I, I think Nova Scotia growing up here and, you know, the, the, the miners and the fishers and the farmers and the, the local characters on the streets of my hometown definitely have inspired a lot of songs over the years mm, and, cool. yeah. it's so rich in music nova scotia isn't it it's just such a musical place there are a lot of musicians uh, i would say given you know the small population i guess mm. in a sense um a lot especially 
places like Cape Breton Island with the fiddling culture there yeah. and, and the, yeah. the Celtic music. And uh, yeah, we're we're fortunate. There there are, there seem to be quite a few musicians. My wife moved from New Brunswick here years ago, and she was at her work. She said, "I can't believe it, but everybody I talk to plays in a band here." <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's yeah. so nice. It's often the way with small communities, isn't it? Everybody gets yeah. involved. It's such a social thing. Yeah. It's the yeah. same where I come from. Everyone plays the fiddle or the accordion. Yes. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. It's yeah. great. Yes. Yeah, so nice. Um, yeah. We were listening to your most recent album today where you're playing drums as well. Yeah. Well, not probably not as well, but uh, <laughs> certainly not as well as someone else could have played them. But I suppose the the garden was naturally weeded by default because of my lack of ability. So I, I but I, I didn't want to call in one of my hotshot drummer friends and say, "Hey, man, can you just go boom click the whole time?" So, so no, it's thought, really nice. Well, it I, was... I, I, I like the sound of them, and I, I used room mics, so there's only there's only two mics on the drums, that are, and they're both 12 feet away from the drums, so nothing's close wow. mic'd. And you get this really cool ambience in the room, and the kick yeah, drum sounds yeah. so warm. Yeah, yeah. Your your album sounds quite ambient in general. I thought actually, like the way you've yeah. done your voice as well. There's a bit of distance in the like air and room yeah. mics being used, and and uh, it forced a little bit more honesty. It was a little. It was trickier to get into edit land mm -hmm. and start start editing too much because of the fact that I would in some of the songs play guitar and sing at the same time or have room mm -hmm. mics on with bleed. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it, 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 it was a fun, less stressful way to record. Uh, and cool. I didn't overthink it. I just laid things down fairly quickly, assuming that these were just all going to be demos. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. That's often and the best way, so, isn't it? Yeah. Like, yeah. So that's the way you get the best vibe. If you put too much pressure on, yeah. then it can sort of kill the vibe a bit, can't it? Well, it's very Tom Absolutely. Waits. Yeah, I was it's just thinking Tom that, that oh. it feeds into that Tom Waits vibe because his albums yeah. are just like, you can hear something falling over in the background yeah. and it's like, whatever. Yeah. He, used to get his, he used to get his session musicians because you've got a few different instruments in the album too, I think, I heard. Yeah. And Tom used yeah. to get Tom. I don't Our know him. Tom. Yeah. <laughs> he used to get his, his session musicians to come in without knowing the music at all and just record the take like and normally he would just use the first take and he'd take like yeah. the most amazing session musician ever and be like okay i'm not telling you what you're doing and they're like i need to why why are you using that that doesn't sit, like yeah. that's not me yeah. at my best and he yeah. but he just wanted this like it's like hesitancy really... and like unfamiliarity mm -hmm. it's kind of brought out the weird in a way and yeah just a totally human approach i would say i find that inspiring um, i worked with an artist named mark lang from australia um, a little bit when he, he he had stayed here and and he was tr he was basically saying you know you need to introduce elements of rust into your into your music mm. and um, well that actually that old guitar in the corner there it was it was going to go in the garbage it's a student model harmony and it was it's falling apart basically and it sounds like poop and the strings have been on it for probably 40 years yeah. But on the recording, it sounds sort of charming and honest. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that leads us on to something else we were curious about, which is the storytelling element in your work. And obviously storytelling is so such a huge part of folk music, but how do you bring that into your show, um, like as away from the music as, as kind of, because we read that you also do impressions as part of your show. Yeah. Uh, you know some well-known local or Canadian musicians. I I have uh, uh, done some Im impressions. Uh, I I at the show a lot of, a lot of the songs are a lot of, some of the songs are serious. Some of them are sad. Um, uh, you know there was a, a I put out a record in 2004 called Two Bit World and there was a dead guy in every song and I <laughs> I realized quickly that the stories have to be funny in between the songs if for a live show. Yeah. You know, and I, it's more socially acceptable to kill people in your songs if you're making the audience laugh in between the songs. I, <laughs> so that's, that's sort of been doing that. Yeah, that's such a gift, um, like, Dave, because like my favorite shows, my favorite books and like generally my favorite entertainment is when people make me laugh and cry like in one breath, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah, that's really cool that you managed to do that. Oh, awesome. it's it's um. Yeah, it, it's it makes me um, 
feel good seeing audiences laugh. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and there's definitely moments where I know that are, are sad. So I've always been a nervous performer, and I find that if you can get out there and get a good laugh or two early on in the show, that it, it, it just makes everything so much easier. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah. It just yeah. sets the tone for that. It just relaxes you, doesn't it? Yeah. People ask me if I still get nervous on stage, and it's like, of course I do. Um, you know, and it just like totally depends on the, the show. And sometimes it doesn't like there's no rhyme or reason to it. But you, how have you sort of come to terms with that? Have you had like processes to work through that? Well, it's it's something I've like learned to live with. I still I still get nervous. It's to the point now where if, if I wasn't nervous, I'd be nervous. Like, why am I not nervous? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I should be nervous. Uh, do I care? <laughs> Maybe like, I, I, I don't know. But it's uh, I think. In some ways, it's gotten a little easier to manage, but uh, yeah, it's just a na it's just part of who I am. As a you know, I, even as a kid, I was a shy kid. I I would hate to do public speaking or or be to even ask a question to a teacher in school or you know that's just it was just my nature. And, and uh, yeah. but the so the music as a vehicle, you know, I guess it forces you to overcome that to certain degrees. But the nervousness is always there and yeah. And, uh, yeah. That's cool. That's yeah. really cool and brave, I think, that you're a musician, but also it's your way to be, um, to express yourself. That's what I feel too. Like it's a vehicle in which we can be ourselves, <laughs> like in the public eye or whatever. Um, yeah. I think so that yeah. a lot of us are like that. And that's, we mm -hmm. sort of find comfort um, in hanging out with one another. And, and the music, you know, has, brought us together if it wasn't for instruments none of us would know one another <laughs> you know we, That's yeah. Right, yeah. It's, it, it would be a whole different world yeah, yeah totally. I think the, the most performers are a mixture of introvert and extrovert because you have to have that introvert side in order to create and mm. want to spend yeah. time on your own in a room thinking of ideas and yeah and ruminating. expressing something that is otherwise inexpressible mm. I think mm -hmm. You guys are awesome. You, 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 this is an amazing. This is a, an incredible interview. <laughs> we've it gone is. through chickens. We've it's... got. <laughs> we really wanted to ask you if you would do one of your impressions, whether you'd. Feel uh, um, I just I don't know if any if the if the audience would know who they are. Oh, because it's like local. Sort yeah. Of. Yeah, yeah. Enough. What about, um, yeah. no is there an, an impression of someone, have you explained to us who, who it might be? One of my, well, maybe maybe my best friend in the world actually is a, a guy named J.P. Cormier. And uh, he and I impersonate one another all the time. He does a really good me. <laughs> and, uh, and I like to, I like to, I like to impersonate him. Um and everything he says is with conviction. He JP is an incredible musician, one of the best guitar players on the on the planet. You know, he travels all all over the place. He he played Billman. He played banjo for Bill Monroe in the Grand Old Opera when he was seventeen years old. Oh my God! And so he plays he cool. plays all these different instruments, and he's an incredible songwriter, one of our best Canadian songwriters. And he, the guy is just he's a legend. And and uh, I'm actually going to his house tomorrow. And so we hang out all the time. We we have collaborated. So maybe if you ask me a question, I could I could answer like JP. Okay. Hey, yeah. hey, JP. What was What's it like, it like playing, playing the Grand Old Opry when you were seventeen? <laughs> it's not too bad. It was wicked. It blew my face right off. Eh? But I don't, I don't know. That's that's about. <laughs> I feel like I know him now. I don't. I know. I don't know if anybody's gonna get that, you know. But <laughs> there'll be and... a few people out there. Happy about that, I think. Yeah, yeah, no, he's but he's in, he's incredible. You have to check him out on. You have to check him out on online. Um, yeah, just an incredible, incredible fella. Yeah. Cool. Ace. Um. Yeah. Well, I guess like a final question we wanted to ask you was, um, you're a soloist, um, so you've done a fair bit of touring as a soloist. Is, would that be right? Yeah, most of it. Um, I I do travel sometimes uh, as a duo or a trio yeah um, but mostly solo yeah yeah, yeah. Cool. So, um, and that's a very different experience both of us have done a little solo touring um <laughs> you you've done more, done more. because it's um, hard to do that 
<laughs> um, but um, it's a very different experience. I go on a spiritual journey. I feel like I go introverted when I'm on the road and I'm during the day and then it's like oh I'm out on stage now mm -hmm. and it's like out your it's, box it's just quite a funny sort of push and pull and so I was wondering yeah like how you feel about that um as yeah when you're when you're traveling by yourself there's a yeah you feel like more of a drifter or something and you're and uh there's a certain freedom in it um and uh less pressure in a sense because you're you're not worried to make sure the other person has eaten or anything like that like so um it, it just uh yeah maybe a little bit of freedom i but i enjoy touring um sometimes i'll travel with a bass player or a guitar mandolin player and i enjoy the the company on the road too mm -hmm. but but yeah there is something about the solo traveling around from place to place like i love how you said you feel like you're on a spiritual journey yes you're sort of just a <laughs> wandering around and, and, yeah. and discovering things and, and looking at things and yeah. and you, you get to yeah. experience everything through your own perspective and as you say you don't have to take anybody else into account so it's just all of yeah. this you have a lot of time to process life yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so there's are some some good things about it and yeah, yeah but I suppose cool. that's why I like to co-write because mm -hmm. uh, it, um, I like to co-write quite a bit because because I do travel around by myself, so yeah. at least I can go through this whole musical world and collaborate with others along the way. Yeah, yeah totally for sure. What do you have like gigs in the pipeline coming up, and are you sort of are you really missing them, or have you been enjoying the time? Yeah, it's it. All of my international gigs were cancelled. I was supposed to do. The, Cambridge Folk Festival this year, actually. Oh, and, and, I would have and, seen you uh, there. I'll see oh, you there next year. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah, and then a couple. I had a trip to the states and uh, BC, um, Alberta, and Ontario, and all of the, all of those um, trips got canceled. Mm. Uh, but there are some last minute dates popping up within the Atlantic bubble, um, not too far from from home. Cool. Great. So I think that uh, yeah, it's it's certainly not going to be as busy as it was last year, but yeah, but uh, yeah. we're sur we're surviving and and yeah. uh, chick chickens are pumping out them them eggs and oh, that's great. I think we're going to be okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah nice right. one. Oh, Dave, thank you so so much. It's been yeah. so so lovely to chat and to get yeah, to know thanks. you this. Thanks, thanks for doing this. for doing this and awesome questions and yeah. Appreciate oh, it. Thanks. thanks for all awesome the answers. So, yeah. And if you want to see Dave's chickens, where can we go to see your chickens? Maybe I'll do a little video um, and give people a tour of the of the chicken house. That'd be <laughs> awesome. <laughs> okay. Thanks so much, Dave. Thanks, Dave. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Take care. Thanks, you too.